Hello and welcome to another video. I came across this image on Pixbay and there was something about it that I really liked. I think it was the pose, that all important eye contact, the style of his dress which just works so well with the background. But the more I looked at the picture, the more I wondered if it might look better if we toned everything down slightly. Because the image itself is absolutely pin sharp. Because of the style of his dress, the background, I wondered if it would look better if it was aged, so we're going to tone the picture. And then we're going to darken it down slightly before adding that all-important vignette. Right, let's make a start just toning down the sharpness of the image. Now we're going to come over to the Layers panel. I'm going to duplicate the background layer. So I'm going to use Command-J or Control-J. That's Command-J, Control-J. We're now going to head up to Filter. We're going to come down to Blur. We're going to come across to Gaussian Blur. And when Gaussian Blur opens, I've got a radius of one pixel, which actually looks pretty good. I've also got the preview ticked, so you can see it happening on the image itself. You can see just how sharp that picture is. Right, clicking down, there it is again. We're going to leave it on a radius of one pixel, and I'm going to click OK. Right, the important thing is to zoom into the image. So I'm going to use Command-1 or Control-1, that's Command-1, Control-1, and we pop to 100% of the picture. Now I think this is just a little bit too soft, so coming up to the Opacity slider, I'm going to drop it down, just taking it into this area here. That looks better. Switching it off and on, you can see the difference, the before and there's the after. But I'd like these eyes to remain sharp. So we're going to put in a layer mask. Coming over to the toolbox, we're going to pick up a paintbrush. Just checking out the tool options. Yes, I've got a soft edge brush, 70 pixel. Let's fold that down out of the way, perhaps just a little bit too big. So I'm going to use the left hand square bracket to make that brush smaller. Clicking down, we're going to go over the eye and you can see that brightening up as it becomes sharper. Over this eye, those catch lights looking better like that. Zooming back out to fit on screen using Command-0, Control-0. For the next stage, we're going to tone the image. Before we tone it though, there's something you need to make sure of. Now, because we're on the mask, I've got black and white in the foreground and background colors. Now I've got a feeling that they were slightly different before we set out. So let's come back over to the thumbnail of the image. We're gonna double click on it. Yes, you can see there it is, we've got blue and white. We need to make sure we've got the default colors. So if you've got any other colors like I've got here, press D on the keyboard or click on this little icon. So pressing D on the keyboard, there it is, that has now restored the default colors. We're now gonna head up to the adjustment layer. We're gonna come down to gradient map. Now when gradient map opens, you can see it makes a pretty good black and white. And I was tempted to think, shall I go down the black and white route? But I think Tony could actually suit this image a little bit better. So coming over onto our gradient map, gonna click in the window here, which is gonna bring up the gradient editor. Coming over to this color stop, if we click on it, location is set to zero. Clicking in the window opens up the color picker. And this is where we change the way the image looks. You can see we can add quite a nice red tone to the picture. I'm gonna lift this up. The color I'm after is more of like a brownie tone. So coming into this region here, looks pretty good. Just coming over, coming into the bottom corner there. Just dropping it down slightly. I want a little bit more of a browner tone. And into this area here. That looks good like that. Right, clicking OK. We're now going to change the location. Now the, the location is the location of the color stop. Bring your cursor over the text. It's much easier than using the slider. And I'm just going to move it across. The more we move it over, look at the way we can darken the tones. I'm going to take it to this sort of region here, just perhaps a little bit more, 12. Yeah, that looks good. But looking at the image, let's just move this up out of the way. These whites are looking just a little bit too bright. So I'm going to click on this color stop. We've now got our whites. The location is 100%. Going to click in the window and I'm just going to lift this up. Going to take it to roughly the same sort of region I had before. And if I just move it up very slightly into this area, that's starting to look better. Perhaps just down a little bit, up a little bit there. And you can see that was the current. There's our new. I think that looks better, so let's click OK to that. 
Right, so you can see this is now affecting the darker area of our image. You can see the way it's toning that in these browns. The lighter part, which is this color that we have here, is now toning the whites in the image. But we can add another one. Clicking on the color midpoint, the important thing is make sure you bring your cursor so it says color midpoint. Clicking on this, 50%. You can now increase the darker tones. We can now bring it back the other way. You can increase the lighter tones. But if you bring your cursor out to the side, you can click to add a color stop. In goes the color stop and a pretty interesting effect we have. Right, clicking in the window. I'm now going to bring this down into this area here and it's lifting it up. And it was doing this I noticed what we have in the background. And I just loved all these marks that we have on the, the plaster. And that's the reason why I decided to darken the image down. So I'm just going to take this up into this sort of region. Let's just drop it down very slightly like that. I'm just dropping it down a little bit more. That looks good. Clicking OK. And you can see the way we've gone from our dark brown tone there into the lighter browns, then into that creamy tone. That looks good. We're now going to click OK. Right, let's fold that down out of the way as well. For the next stage, we're going to darken down the image. Back up to an adjustment layer. We can use levels, we can use brightness contrast, we can even use hue saturation. It doesn't really matter which one we choose. Let's go for levels. And all we're going to do is change the, the blend mode from normal. We're going to select multiply, which has really darkened down the image. But coming over to the opacity slider, let's drop it down. Let's take it into this sort of region here. I just want the, yeah, just so we can see the difference in that plaster. We've gone from this to this. That looks good but we've darkened him down as well. Now with an adjustment layer, you get a really handy layer mask. Coming over to the toolbox, I'm gonna to pick up the gradient tool. Got black as a foreground color. Coming down to tool options. The important thing here is to click in the window, which opens up the gradient editor again. We're gonna click on this one. You need to make sure you've got the foreground to transparent. That is important. It needs to be black through to transparent. Click OK. Coming to the opacity, I'm going to drop this right the way down. We're going to take it down to 30%. Linear, no, we're going to change this to radial. So clicking on the radial gradient, folding that down out of the way, coming over the image with the gradient tool, clicking down, pulling it out, releasing it, and we can go over the image. And because we got 30%, we can go over it several times. We're not removing it all in one blast as you would do if you had it set to 100%. It just gives you more control as we come around the picture. So we can paint in with the lightness. So coming around this part, gonna keep this part of the shoulder there quite dark. Same around this part of the image. So just coming over this area here, around his face again, not forgetting his ear. Clicking down, pulling it out, it's quite a fair way this time there. That looks good like that. You can see there it is on the mask. If we just switch this off and on, you can see the difference we're making. Just perhaps a little bit more around underneath his cap. Next, we're now gonna apply a vignette to the image. Back over to the toolbox. We're gonna to pick up the marquee tool. Now we need to make sure we have got the elliptical marquee tool. So I'm gonna click on this one and make sure as well you've got the new selection. So clicking on new selection, let's fold this down out of the way. Clicking on the image, I'm gonna drag it out. and I'm gonna keep it over towards the left-hand side. So I'm gonna bring it into this area. And because you've got the new selection, as soon as you come inside the marquee tool, you can see you get that little rectangle with the flag on the top. That means we can reposition it. Just going to take it to this area here. I want it to come down a little bit further on the bottom. So we're going to come to select, transform selection, which now puts the transform tool around our selection. Grab handles, each of the corners, as well as the top, the bottom, the two sides. So we can come down, I'm going to pull this down into this sort of region here. That looks better like that. Double clicking inside the frame. Job nearly done. Right, heading back up to an adjustment layer, we're gonna come down to levels. Now when levels opens, you can see there it is, and you can see our mask, black on the outside, white on the inside. Coming down to our levels adjustments, 
if I just move it in on this side, what's going to do? It's going to darken it down, but it's darkening down the center part, which is not what we want. So using a shortcut, Command I or Control I, so that's Command I, Control I, what we're going to do is we're going to invert this mask. So Command I, Control I, there it is. Right, we need to soften off the edges. Filter, Blur, coming down to Gaussian Blur. But I don't think that's quite enough that we need to take this up a fair bit more. So going right up into this sort of region here and you suddenly see it sort of pop into position. We've gone from that to that and we're now going to click OK. But there's more. I like using levels to form the vignette because if I just take this back, what we can do is we can come to the slider here. If we move this across, look at the way this sort of tones down the picture, it makes it darker. But look at the way it gives those nice rich tones to the image as well. And I like the way that works. So we're going to take this into this sort of region here. Looks pretty good. Perhaps just backing that up a little bit more. Let's have a look. There it is before the vignette and after. That looks good like that. Perhaps just taking it up a little bit further. Let's fold that down out of the way. So there it is. There is our image toned. Let's just take a look and see what we've done to the picture. Coming to our background layer, I'm going to press and hold down the Alt or the Option key. So that's holding down Alt or Option and clicking on the visibility icon, the little eye icon. We have gone from this to this. Wow. Right. Taking a look. There's the sharpness. And you can see just how sharp that image was. There it is with the tone in of the picture. And as I switch this off and on, you can see even darkening down the picture, adding that vignette, the difference that's made to the image. But there's more. Let's come back to our toning. If I click on the tone layer, now if we drop down the opacity, if we drop it down, we can start to blend that toning in with the image. And I'm going to take it right the way down into this sort of region here. I want the color to come through there. That will do nicely. Just switching this off and on. And you can see the way that we're now just adding that tone to the picture, we're aging the picture. We've darkened it down, that background, which I think really does work well with the image. Just switching the vignette off and on. And you can see the way that works. Everything with this is fully adjustable. So save it in layers, put it aside, look at it then a couple of days later with fresh eyes. You can then make any adjustments. But I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. And don't forget to subscribe as there's plenty more videos to come. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.